looks at violence within facilities, but it does not really look at their criminogenic elements, as someone I think earlier mentioned, uh, that looks at why they come to the system in the first place. And without addressing that, you're not going to change a recidivism of 70%. It has to be looked at more comprehensively. We need to look at our ratios of how many um, youth we have in term, and, and the number of staff. Um, right now in some facilities, we have living units that are, that are um, in the 35 to 45 range that function much better than those in the 55 to 65. It's intuitive, it makes sense um, that the more time you have to interact with the population to provide services, then you not only have, I think, more appropriate behavior, you have more of a chance to impact their, the, the use um, factors that, that bring them into the system in the first place. We need to look at that population I talked about earlier, and it may be 5% of the, the youth that come to our system that are extremely high risk and, and high need and look at the appropriate design, the appropriate staffing, and the training for, for staff to find alternatives other than just locking them down. It has to be a very intentional effort to be able to transition them to a, to a less restrictive environment uh, because we all know they're returning to the community. Second principle is around effective rehabilitation treatment. Well, when I look at 70% at recidivism and also look at only 34% of our youth who are receiving services, I'm sure there's a correlation between the two. We need to be able to look at how we expand treatment, that there is no more general population, that we look at every youth who comes to our system has a program, whether it's substance abuse, mental health, um, dealing with uh, education, all the different risk factors and, and needs that we know need to be addressed, we need to be able to target those more specifically and provide services that will address them. Uh, I think critical, and it's been talked about before, the, is the issue of violence, and, and I have not seen in any other jurisdiction um, uh, a model, I think, that will address the, the violence issues that, that uh, are part of our population. Uh, I have met with some of the, the um, authors of, of blueprint programs, model programs around functional family therapy and, and multi-systemic therapy that have, have had proven success that are evidence-based. All those apply in the community, and they generally are a duration of three to six months. Uh, as you all know, the length of stay in, in the juvenile justice system in, in California is roughly three years. So we have an opportunity, I think, to concurrent with their stay in facilities, to engage families, to look at intensive wraparound models, to look at the environment in which they experience in the community and really have an impact to address violence reduction. We need a different classification system. Currently now, we classify youth by their age and by their gang affiliation, and that drives the placement in facilities. I think until we target a different system that looks at why they're coming to us, and, and I'm not saying we don't consider gang affiliation because of safety issues, but we need to target those factors that if we can address them, will really improve their, the youth success when they transition back to the community. We need a different system for parole violators. A large part of our population now are violators coming back from, um, from communities, and we tend to then just put them in with other youth who are, who are new commitments, and we need to be able to separate them out, provide specific services for those the youth that be, will be in the system for a short period of time, rather than those who are mixing them in with youth that may be in the system three to four years. We need to look at reentry. Um, you know, obviously that begins when the youth first comes into our system. Everything we do, you know, I think that the, the saying is that uh, begin with the end in mind. And the end in mind is having youth who has the skills, who has addressed the issues to be successful in the community. We need to develop our programs and services through the time their youth is within our system to be able to address those. Guarantee the victims are uh, adequately heard served and, and protected the justice system. Uh, over the past 10 years, I've been part of the Associ National Association of Juvenile Administrators, and it used to be that California was in the forefront of working with victims. And I think over time, that has really eroded, and, and it's our vision as we look at the plans to the court to revive that, the importance of looking at restorative justice, of working with the uh, impact on victims, and, and working in the community is absolutely critical to everything we do. 
And that means perhaps um, establishing victim service coordinators in every facility to, to make sure that that happens. Um, the fifth principle is around strengthening the entire juvenile justice commission continuum through collaboration with stakeholders, communities, and families. I, I think that there are missed opportunities in what happens at a local level for youth that are placed in the, in the uh, juvenile justice system in California. There's not a good exchange of information. There's not, I think, the opportunity that we're at a local level. There may be experience in working with families and other service providers of, of gaining some of that knowledge and helping us as we work with youth who are within our facilities. And I think that partnership, and I've heard it from me, many stakeholder meetings here, that there's an interest in working more effectively, not only at the front end, but when we look at reentry into the community as well. Uh, and, and finally, evaluate program quality outcomes and effectiveness. All this is great discussion, but unless you're measuring it, unless you see an, a change in, in recidivism, unless you have facilities that are safe, more safe, then um, I think you're not investing, we're not investing our money wisely. So we need to be sure that, that we target evaluation uh, and, and really looking at our outcomes in the system.